Your, your character's exasperation with him is kind of the only moment where we see her facade kind of crack. Um, how important is a moment like that in, you know, giving you like another shade of who this character is that you can bring to these other moments when she seems so cheerful and like upbeat? Well, I think every actor likes an opportunity to run the gamut, mm -hmm. if it's, even if it's only A to B. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I think um, it gives the character more colour and more depth if, if you show them at both of their extremes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all valid the way she flies off. I think probably the boy, um, Sullivan Stapleton's character, is probably her favourite. That's probably the son she's had with the guy she's had the biggest sexual passion with. And I, um, I think I think it's kind of evident in the way she relates to to Sullivan mm -hmm. that he's probably her favorite, even though she loves her baby, really pretty one, Luke Ford. Um, and uh, the what subsequently happens to Sullivan, she finds so distressing and so not in her plan mm -hmm. that, um, that uh, and she blames Pope rightly so for that mm. and flies off the handle at him. But there again, you see there's tiny details of, of the performance of everybody. Um, Ode to David Michaud's incredible. He's got a great psychological insight into people, which is really, well, it's obligatory for a director. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, when Smurf goes up to the detective at the end of this movie and she presents to him that she has no hard feelings, she. You know, there's there's a really interesting sort of dynamic in that she doesn't seem to occur to her that another person might not just sort of see what happened as like a necessary thing that occurred. Um, do you feel like, um, to some extent, that's kind of like her, you know, her tragic flaw? I mean, clearly. Do you think she's being innocent? Don't you think she, maybe she, maybe she? Uh, I mean, I think it's good that she looks innocent. But maybe she's just rubbing the salt into the wound. Mm. Maybe she's just saying, "Up oh, you for the rent. I won." So mm -hmm. see, it's you know, I, I mean, I, I and that's good that it's mm. ambiguous. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that's like I was saying before, the element of um, ambiguity is good. Is good storytelling. Mm. Well, I think that it it just it, that that moment really kind of sets up the final scene of the movie because it really does speak to her sense of sort of certainty about the way that she does things and how her certainty does not necessarily translate to the way that other people yeah. act or react or whatever. Well, she's not a decent human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, do you, I mean, do you think about um, larger themes when you're, when you're working on a, on a film? You know, no, like, I think that's a mistake. I yeah. think you've got to concentrate on your character mm -hmm. and, and, and how you relate to the other actors. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's one of the first things acting teachers tell you. You can't act a concept. You can only act a character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you've, you've, uh, you were talking about a gauntlet, forgive me for making a sort of ham-fisted transition, but you've, you have really enjoyed a lot of acclaim and attention for, for your performance in this movie, deservedly so. Um, you know, how, how, how does that feel? I mean, to sort of go through that, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure that's good, but yeah. you know, like what has sort of your experience been? Well, it's so, it was so unexpected. I thought we made a good film and did good work, but I think that about everything I do. <laughs> um, but I think, but for it to capture the imaginations of the Americans like it has is fabulous, mm -hmm. especially for David. I'm thrilled for David. I think his career is is um, set, set in stone now. But um, for me at this stage in my career, it's so out of the field, so unexpected, and so, such an adventure. I love it. It's fantastic. Well, in, in the last couple of years, actors like Amy Ryan and Melissa Leo have, yeah. people who have worked for a while, you know, they broke through in these sort of unexpected smaller films and are now getting the chance to do a lot of really different kinds of eclectic things. Have you felt like thus far you've had as many opportunities to do like as many different kinds of things as you want or are you hoping to some extent that maybe this attention will give you more of that opportunity? Well like most actors there have always been roles that I wished I'd played and well and now I'm too old for most of them <laughs> um, but, but I've always been very um, philosophical about that. I think now at this stage of my life there's probably not a lot of stuff around for me but 
at least the choices may be a, a bit bigger and mm -hmm. I'm I'm already getting scripts from America so it's um it's very very gratifying I, I would never have believed it <laughs> uh, would, would you have had a, a long sustained career in uh, in Australia um, you know do you do you think about sort of the prospect of becoming or, or, or migrating in any way by, by starting to do more Hollywood films? Or does that, I mean, like, just at some degree of commercial consideration going, like, now Hollywood wants me to do movies, I should start thinking about the possibility yeah. of doing more of those maybe than sure. films of my home. Sure. Because um, I work mostly in the theatre at mm -hmm. home. Um, in fact, a play I just finished with Kate Blanchett will be coming to America this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to that too, so... I've never worked on stage in America either. Mm -hmm. And yet I've been coming to America for 40 years and loving every minute of it, but never expecting. My generation didn't generally, in speaking, do that. Whereas this generation, they all come over for the pilot season um, uh, and, and often do very well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we're imbued with American culture, happily so. We've got our own very strong culture, mm -hmm. but you know, we, we, we've grown up watching American television and American films. And mm -hmm. So it's not an effort for us to blend. Mm -hmm. I well, keep telling people in America this past week, did you know that Anthony LaPaglia is Australian? I did know that, yeah. Because you're the first American I've spoken to who, 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 didn't, who did know. Cause well, I think in an, analyze that as the only one of the few times, like in an American movie, he's actually used his accent because oh. every time he's off camera in the movie, in the movie or whatever, he's always like talking to Robert De Niro with that accent. So that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the, but people don't know because they have seen him in, in so many movies, and I, I wouldn't want to be presumptuous enough to to say like, well, now do you want to start doing real movies in Hollywood now that you <laughs> were, you know? Yeah, but the choices are so much greater. That's <laughs> the thing about Hollywood. <laughs> And the budgets, I mean, there's the luxury of, of um, not having to scrimp and save and cut corners. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of um, considerations. And it's an adventure, first and foremost. And I love working with new people. I love um, working especially with young filmmakers. I mean, it's true, basically, that there's nothing new under the sun, but I love the way new the, this generation brings a whole new perspective to things. And um, yeah, I, I'm not an old timer who doesn't want to move with the times. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, you know, like what's sort of in, on your schedule for this sort of as, as the sort of award season continues to be underway? Well, after the awards this week, um, I've got a whole lot of meetings being organized for me with casting agents and people who um, might end up representing me, I don't know. Mm -hmm. My agent in, in Australia has um, been organising it and a few people here. And, um, and then I've got a couple of Australian films being offered to me. I've just got to work out how to time, how to schedule that within coming to America later in the year with um, the Chekhov play. Um, so yeah, I've got a, a very exciting year ahead. I can't believe my luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I know that... You know,